Well, it seems appropriate on this last show before Thanksgiving, last regular show before Thanksgiving. Uh, we have Denise Kiernan, who is the author of We Gather Together, A Nation Divided, A President in Turmoil, and a Historic Campaign to Embrace Gratitude and Grace, which I presume this is essentially the political and, and national origins of what we call Thanksgiving. So, Denise, welcome to the show. Hello. Nice to be back. Nice to have you back. We, we, we talked about ladies at Los Alamos last time, right? Yes, we did. Now we're going to talk about um, a lady of Thanksgiving. So we're kind of in the same wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, so we'll take us from the origins of Thanksgiving and then the modern adaptation of it, Denise. Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't know if we have quite that much time. But um, one of the things that I found uh, fascinating about Thanksgiving has always been one of my favorite um, holidays. But I was... I was well aware that uh, perhaps the, that the story we were told as kids, some of us of a certain age, um, and some of the kids today, is not quite uh, accurate at all. So I, I started looking into what the history, not just of Thanksgiving in this country is, because we didn't invent it, but what it was also uh, in other parts of the world prior to uh, the existence of the colonies and beyond and sort of where the holiday has gone and evolved. And actually, there are three books I have in this particular series right now. So there's the one you just mentioned, which is for adults. Uh, there is a picture book called Giving Thanks. That's for little kids. And there is a young reader edition that just came out called Gather Together Stories of Thanksgiving from Then to Now. So I, as you can see, I like spending a lot of time on this topic, and I, I wanted it to be something that families could read together. So basically, we have, uh, we have gratitude celebrations, shall we say, that are as old as the existence of humans on this planet. Uh, gratitude is a global construct. It is not particular to any one place, uh, culture, or time. Over time, as people move from one part of the world to another, they brought some of their traditions with them. So when Europeans came to North America, uh, they brought the tradition of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving had existed for uh, quite some time in Europe. There are mentions of Thanksgiving that go back hundreds and hundreds of years in various kinds of texts. Um, Thanksgiving, so they bring that over with them. Of course, there were already indigenous people in North America who had their own, uh, their own celebrations of gratitude and thankfulness. And so as cultures began to uh, adapt to their new surroundings, you know, they, some, of those, some of those traditions evolve and adapt as well. So um, what was interesting, what I, what I really liked learning, I learned so much when I was, when I was researching this, is, you know, in, in the colonies uh, and prior to that, there used to be several Thanksgivings a year. Uh, Thanksgivings were decreed by, might be decreed by um, a religious leader, might be decreed by someone who was a you know, political leader in, the, in your community. Uh, they might be decreed for uh, a good harvest, which is in line with many of the harvest um, rituals that take place all over the planet. They might be decreed uh, because a, 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 an enemy was vanquished in battle. Um, sometimes they involved meals. Sometimes, this is my favorite, it was, uh, thanks, it was a Thanksgiving, and you would have fasting and humiliation, which sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> sounds like, like the festivals, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right up, and it's right up there. Fat, when you think of Thanksgiving, we all think of fasting, right? No, um, actually, not you're at humiliated all. by the amount of food you're able to ingest <laughs> is usually where, where we're at. Um, so it was really interesting how all these different kinds of Thanksgivings existed, and they would be at different times depending on where you were. So in the... Um, in the uh, early to mid 19th century, there was a woman in New Hampshire named Sarah Josepha Hale, who was obsessed with Thanksgiving. And she was she did she was not allowed to get an education as as a as a young girl, which was not uncommon back then. But her family surrounded her with books, and she was extremely learned because of that. Uh, her brothers were allowed to go to school, come back, they would teach her what they learned. And she grows up and, and starts writing. And uh, she eventually decides she's going to write a novel. Now, this is, this is kind of, you know, kind of a, you 
know, she's a bit of a maverick. Um, she didn't look like one, but she, she was definitely a maverick of her time. And her, this book she publishes gets noticed, and she's asked to edit a ladies' magazine. So now we have, um, and she had recently been widowed. Um, her husband died of pneumonia, as, as many people did back then. People still do now. Everybody has to be, be careful this time of year. And so you have a, a widowed mother of five with no formal education who is the head of the most powerful ladies' magazine in the country, which actually had a higher, higher um, subscription rate than any other publication in the country at the time. And in addition to... Uh, all sorts of wonderful things that she she did, and she was totally the the Martha Stewart, uh, Oprah Winfrey influencer, charitable you know fundraiser of her time. She wrote about the fact that there should be one Thanksgiving, it should be the same day every year, it should be the same day throughout uh, the the brand new states, and that day should be the last Thursday in November. And so that's where that's where and I and I get into because um, you know me I'll just keep rambling unless you unless you stop. So, <laughs> I um, noticed. No. <laughs> so yeah, I mean if you like the, the question was going to take us from there up to the present. It's like oh my god, I need an hour and a half. But um, so she is the, she is the heart of this. She is the heart of this story. So we have the kind of the lead up to how mm -hmm. kind of the idea of Thanksgiving arrived on this continent. Uh, this woman who decided to make it her her really one of her life's goals to have this established as a single holiday that the entire country shared. And what year is this? And that was okay. So when she finally, she starts, she starts, she writes the novel in 1827. So she starts I, I, working for this magazine. And in the, in, in the novel, she writes about Thanksgiving too, what you should eat, how you should set the table, how to prepare things, where the kids should sit, all this stuff. So I'm an, I'm an immigrant. I came here, and I guess I've been lied to for the last 20-odd years. There's no pilgrims and, and, and uh, Native Americans. And that, that didn't happen? No, there were pilgrims and there were Native Americans, but that was, that was not, in, by any stretch of the imagination, the first Thanksgiving. There actually was no first. I mean, I, actually, there was no first Thanksgiving. That's a whole separate thing. But there were pilgrims. There were Native Americans. Um, that was not but they didn't a, eat turkey uh, together. a happy relationship, you know. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, so Denise, when did the the Norman Rockwell um, Thanksgiving, not per se, but you know the the turkey and the dressing and the, what we have known as the the Thanksgiving traditions here in America in the last Thursday or third Thursday of November and what have you? What what leads up directly to to that? I love that you mentioned Norman Rockwell because he's actually in the last third of my book. I talk specifically about how he um, depicted the American idea of Thanksgiving. Um, so uh, Sarah basically starts petitioning leaders, uh, ambassadors in other countries, heads of territories that weren't states yet, and presidents to make this happen. She wanted the president to proclaim this particular day to be Thanksgiving. She, she petitions four presidents in a row. They all ignore her. And then finally, in the middle of the Civil War, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln says, you know what? Okay, I will proclaim the last Thursday of November as a national Thanksgiving. And that is where the tradition of Thursday in November Thanksgiving started. Uh, presidents still proclaim Thanksgiving to this day. They write a proclamation every year. It still goes on um you know, it'll happen. It'll happen this year. Um, but she knew that unless it was an actually actually a law that every president would have to do it year after year after year. So she kept petitioning every president until the day she died, all the way up through um, Rutherford B. Hayes, uh, B. Hayes. And by then, it you know it had become a it had become a tradition, if not an official holiday. So the food, um, actually a lot of the food that we eat is quite, um, was actually indicative of early times in North America. Um, eating fowl on celebratory occasions is something the many Europeans did and certainly something that, that happened here. So turkey is in line with that and pheasant and other things. Cranberries have always been a very important, uh, were a very important uh, source of nutrition in America. 
we owe it to the indigenous people for uh, bringing that to everyone's attention, that it was high in antioxidants and good vitamins and also could be stored uh, without refrigeration because there wasn't any back then. Ditto uh, squash and pumpkin. Uh, those could all be easily easily stored and had a, a lasting um, not lasting shelf life, and that shelf was not in the refrigerator. So a lot of the things, pretty much most of the things that we associate with uh, Thanksgiving today, food-wise, um, is, is, is not much different from how they would have had a celebratory meal in the past. I just, but it wasn't actually, Denise, mm-hmm. I, I just, yeah. I associate the, the holiday with, if you go back in time, the harvest, right? So you, you got the bountiful yeah, yeah. harvest, and you got a bunch of leftover food, so we need to make a bunch of food out of it and have a feast. And and that's, to me, that's got to be part of the lead in here, right? Well, the harvest, going back to all the different kinds of celebrations that already um, existed and the multiple Thanksgivings that may have taken place in a, in a community or several different communities, a lot of those were often because of a good harvest or happened sometime in the fall. But there, it was also not un, uncommon to have a spring Thanksgiving as well or a Thanksgiving related to, you know, oh. the, hey, we won this this naval battle. But um, in England, they did that a lot. So A lot of naval battles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And, I mean, actually, recently, there was a, uh, when, Queen Elizabeth, uh, when Queen Elizabeth died, there was a Thanksgiving mass um, in, in London. Uh, Denise, we're just about out of time. Uh, a, a final fact about Thanksgiving that most of us don't know. What else you have? Well, uh, one of the th- that, uh, football games, parades, um, all of that sort of stuff came came later, and we almost uh, we almost lost Thanksgiving in a sense during um, FDR. He actually tried to change Thanksgiving from the last. Thursday of November to uh, a week before because merchants were complaining the shopping season was going to be too short if Thanksgiving was on the 30th. So in, uh, in 39, we actually had, uh, we had two Thanksgivings in this country. Half the country uh, celebrated on uh, the fourth Thursday of November. The other half of the country celebrated on the last Thursday of November and about five states celebrated both. And it wasn't until, uh, it wasn't until World War II right after Pearl Harbor, that Thanksgiving actually became an official American holiday. So I love that it kind of took root in the middle of the Civil War and then became an official holiday during World War II, just showing how important it is to to find gratitude during times of real trial and difficulty. And you get the Detroit Lions and Dallas Cowboys every (laughs) Thanksgiving Thursday and now a night game as well. Uh, Denise, how do we find your books? Uh, you can find all my books at denisekiernan.com, D-E-N-I-S-E-K-I-E-R-N-A-N.com. Have a happy Thanksgiving. You guys as well. Take care.